There are so many dragonfly species and this one makes me want to see them all. Dragonflies that flies like a helicopter, that glides. Red, blue, green, yellow, black, all sorts of different colours. A lot of things about dragonflies are still unknown, every one of them with different behaviours. And that's why there are still a lot to explore. Hello, my name is Robin Yam. I'm working as a freelance ecological consultant. When I'm doing biodiversity surveys, I focus on, on dragonflies because I'm the local expert for, for these insects in Singapore. Dragonflies, because they are ectotherms, or in other words, cold-blooded, so they require the heat from the sun to sort of warm them up before they begin their daily activities. They breed in water bodies, so as long as um, there's a water body that's relatively clean and unpolluted, you can find dragonflies. That's a crimson drop wing. It's a very common species and it's actually the only uh, pink colour dragonflies you can find in Singapore. There's another red colour one with black body. That's most probably a spine cutter skimmer. And they are all concentrated on this particular spot because the sun is just nice shining down and it's just reflecting off the water. So what we have here is a very nice dragonfly that you cannot find in an open pond but rather, rather in a more shaded environment like this. So this guy is a, is a grenadier um, and you can tell because of the, the shape of the abdomen which is slightly curved and the obvious um, red colour patterns on, on its body. Here is a common parasol um, and as the name suggests, it's very common, widely distributed in Singapore. In almost any green space, you can find this species. There's a few ways to get a good picture of a dragonfly. So dragonflies, at least for the common species, when they fly, they will always come back to the same spot to perch. So if you are patient enough, when they fly back, you can actually approach them quite close enough. Bring a, a very good uh, zoom lens for a camera, where you can actually zoom um, onto them, um, even though they are quite far away. Don't step off the trail in order to shoot that very rare dragonflies. You do this, you are actually disturbing the wetland habitat. Don't love nature to death. When you take a photograph, shoot it in different angles, top-down view, side view as well as if possible from the front or bottom view uh, and that will help you to identify the species. First, you have to identify um, whether it's a dragonfly or a damselfly. Lah, okay? So, you can see that it's keeping its wings open right when it's at rest. So then it's a dragonfly. And after that, you have to look at the colour. It's a black and yellow stripe pattern on its body. If you have an identification book, then you can tell very clearly that it's, it's, common, it's a common flange tail. That's a species. Okay, so another example, the colour is obviously very different. It's all red in colour. So this is a common red board, red eyes, red thorax and red abdomen. Um, I don't really have a favourite dragonfly, but there's a group of species which I really enjoy. They are called the club tails. They usually um, spend most of their life higher up in the trees, so it's very difficult to spot them. But there are rare occasions where the adults will fly down to the water, either to breed or to forage and that's where um, it's really enjoyable to see them because when you see them, right, it's always a very rare sighting. Um, this is a scarlet schema. It's a bit like an orangey red in colour and if you look at it, the two wings behind, right, there's an orange patch. So what is it doing now? It's actually ambushing for prey and whenever a small little insect, like a small fly, flying past, it will just fly out quickly, catch the prey and then go back. And when I talk about photographing dragonflies, this is the way you, you can do it because if you are um, aware of its behaviour, how it always flies back to the same spot, then with a camera, you can actually approach it quite close to take a good photograph. Some of the fun facts of dragonflies are, for example, I can name three of them. If you are driving or if you are in a vehicle, sometimes you are stop at a junction, you may see out of nowhere a dragonfly comes out and try to touch the vehicle with its body. So what is happening is that because of the reflection, it appears to the dragonfly, the vehicle is actually not a vehicle, but actually a pool of water. The second fun fact is that uh, in the middle of the day, you might find that the dragonfly is raising its abdomen up. This is an oblique position uh, where the dragonfly raises its body up so as to reduce its surface area and this helps it to prevent overheating. The third fun fact is that because dragonfly larvae, um, they live in the water, right? So for some species, when they need to poop, they actually will use jet propulsion to shoot the feces out very far from where it is. Um, when the predator comes, it will actually go for the feces because it can detect the feces rather than the dragonfly larvae itself. So it's a kind of a distraction mechanism for the larvae. So what motivates me to, to share more about dragonflies to, to people, right? For me, it's a way of contributing back to, to society because of what I've learned over the years about dragonflies, the interesting facts, how colourful they are. So, so I want to um, help people to reconnect back to nature 
and I'm using dragonflies as a sort of a conduit but also to teach them the value of freshwater conservation using dragonflies uh, as an indicator of wetland health to, to educate and raise awareness on the importance of uh, wetland conservation. So if you're keen to find out more about dragonflies, where to find dragonflies, how to photograph them, how to identify the different species, um, there's a variety of ways. Uh, one is to join a guided walk, the Dragonfly Watch Program, uh, run by National Parks Board, which is aimed at the citizen scientists. The other way is, of course, to go to the library to look for um, resources like this, a dragonfly book. So this book um, documents all the 136 species of dragonflies that is found in Singapore. It also talks about dragonflies, um, biology and ecology. So for example, this segment here, um, um, talks about where to watch dragonflies, how to photograph them. For the species accounts, each of the species, there's a variety of pictures to show. So for example, this one is a side view, this one is a top view, and these different angles of photographs uh, will help you to identify the species based on your own photograph.